All right, we have pretty much covered everything we plan to cover about objects. Of course, there are a lot of other topics to be covered with regards to class and objects, but we're not going to um, go any further. The rest of the material we have to cover aren't really new material, but rather learning how to uh, use some of the old constructs that we have talked about, such as arrays, such as functions. How can we use those tools with objects? And it turns out that there's basically nothing new. Everything works just as it was. So let's talk about arrays of objects first. Well, what are arrays? Arrays were uh, data structures that would allow uh, storing of set of elements of the same type. So if you have, if you, if you define a variable type, a data type uh, of a certain class, you can have an array of that type. So for example, if you have class ball, inside of which you're going to have x, y, and um, the diameter, uh, the, so the dimensions of, uh, of the circle, uh, you're going to be able to have uh, an array filled with objects of, of ball. And let's see how that is done. Well, the code is here, but let's actually go ahead and program it and also see what it looks like in memory. So if I wanted to declare one object, if I wanted to construct one object of type ball, what would I do? I would say ball, let's say b1, and I would say give me memory, and I would construct it using the default constructor. That would create one um, instance of class ball so b1 in memory will look like this i'm going to have an x y on and diam zero if i want to create a whole array um well the notation of arrays if you recall if i wanted to have an array of integers Let's just put two and two together. So let's say I would have array equal new int. And let's say that I would have three cells, right? So let's also draw this. This is our dummy array that I'm just creating to show a point. So zero, one, and two. And this was zero, zero, zero. And that would be array. So putting these two together, we can have an array of objects. So what is the type? So this is the type of the array. What is the type of the array? The type of the array is ball. Then I need array notation. And then um, the name of the array. So I'm just going to call it ball array. And I would say new. Okay. I would say new. And uh, again, what is the type? The type is ball. And I would need to say how many. I'm just going to say three again. All right. So this is going to create three cells for us. And this is really important for you guys to, to pay attention to. This is going to create three cells. It's going to create three cells, but... We are not going, we don't know, uh, but the object itself hasn't been constructed, right? So there's going to be an object here, there's going to be an object here, and there's going to be an object here. We need to create the object in each cell. So we need to construct the object in each cell. So in order to do that, in order to, for example, in order to create an object in this cell, I need to say, well, ball array. And I need to say in cell one, create ball. So what this does, it's going to create an object of ball inside index zero of my array, which was called
Polary. Right? So I'm going to get x here, which is 0, y here, which is 0, and diam here, which is 0. The rest of the array, it's still null. So let's see what happens when we try to print this array. So if I said, if right now I said print, and I said print uh, ball array index zero, well, you guys remember when you what happens when you try to print the content of an object. You're going to get this memory thing. So you need to say go to index zero and then go to x. So index zero is the object and then dot x would print out x for you, which the content is, is zero. If up here I go ahead and say put, you know, I assign this to, to 11, when you print this out, of course, this is going to print out, print out 11, right? So let's keep it the way it was. Now, I'm printing the content of the object in cell 0. What happens if I print the content of x in index 1? Well, there is no such a thing. So if I call it, if I, if I want to say what's in index 1, it's going to say null pointer exception. It says it's, it's null here, and I can't print when, it, when, it's, when it's null. So what I actually need to do is I need to go ahead here and say ball array index one equal new ball and when i say that then again you're going to have an x is zero y is zero and diam is zero and the third one stays, so I need to do another one for the third um, cell, or index 2. And when I do that, again, x is going to become 0, y 0, and diam. So, so these three, we are constructing the object. So with these three lines, we are constructing object an object in cell 0. And here we are constructing an object in cell 1. And here, actually, I'm missing the 2 here. So we're constructing an object in, in cell 2. And you see how... It's, it's something that can be done using a loop because what if our array wasn't of size 3? What if our array was of, uh, sorry, sorry, a ball array? What if our ball array was of size 1000? Then we, we would, we would have to write 1000 lines. So this is something that could be done using a loop. So instead of this, obviously you would say for ball array, uh, sorry, <laughs> for int i equals 0 i less than ball array dot length and i plus plus and we basically say ball array index i is going to be new ball so for each index, we're going to create, so we're going to replace these three. So you see, it's, um, it's, it's, it's three steps. I'm going to take our, our array of integers out so that the three steps are going to be obvious. So I'll take that out. I'm actually going to remove it from the memory diagram so that there's more room. Create it. Because I had that just to make it just to make a point. So there are three, and I'll leave my object up here. That, so there are three steps. Step one Step one is to make an array 
of type ball. So an, one step is to make an array of type, I should say of type class. Uh, in this case, it is ball. So that, that is step one. So now we have allocated our array. And step two, usually done using a loop, well, always done using a loop because for array, so that is to construct an object in each, an object of type, actually, of, of object. In this case, uh, it is ball array in each cell of the array. So this is what the loop is doing. And then you have, an, and that's it. So it says, so it's a two step procedure. Once you make an array, which is just like making a regular array. And the second one in each cell, you must construct the object. That is uh, the key thing. So uh, that's, that's what, that's what we get, right? And in here, if I want to, for example, set the value of x in the second element to 20, I would simply say ball array index 1. So it's, it's all finding addresses, right? Dot x is 20. So I'll, I'll go to ball array in memory. I'll go to index one and I'll go to X and I'll set this to 20. And if I want to do, for example, diam in two, I would simply say ball array index two dot diam, let's say 50. And then here, this is going to be set to 50. So it's, it's all about finding, finding addresses. All right. So we had an object uh, that was uh, only one object. It wasn't an array of object, B1, that we declared on top. So what happens if I want to copy um, this X into the Y here? or even the x of, of b1. So if I want to copy the value of x at index 1 into x of b1, so that would be b1 dot x. So using the dot operator, we can get to um, into, into b1, obviously, right? So the address is b1 dot x. And we're going to copy into that location the value of ball array index one dot x. So if we print the value of, so right now we're printing the value of x uh, index one, and that's 20. If we do this line, that means that this value will become 20. So then if we just simply say b1 dot x, twenty would be printed out. And what if I want to copy the value inside of x of b1 into another integer? So like I said, it doesn't have to be basically when you want to copy um an object into another object, you have to make sure that each data member is being mapped into uh, its right location. But technically, I could copy any integer into into any integer. So right now, I could technically copy the value of x into the y of index two. So I could simply say um, ball array index two dot y is going to take the value of b1 dot x. So if I do that, then 20 is going to be copied into index 2 and y. 
So that's going to be 20 as well. What happens if I want to say, if I want to have the same thing? So if I want to say ball array index 3 dot x set that to 100. What happens? Well, this is going to be an out of bound exception because there is no index 3. The largest index that we have is index 2. So, I mean, if I do this for index 0, for instance, it'll happily do it. So, if I do it for index 0, um, x here, this is going to be 100. All right. So hopefully array of objects is uh, clear to everybody. I am going to do um, a tutorial on this. So please make sure to watch the tutorial as well. But um, I think you basically know everything that there is to know about um, arrays of objects.